Hello everyone. I am reviewing this book called The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. And this book is called The Red Tent because women, well, I'll say women are the only ones allowed in the red tent. And I will explain a little bit more about that by the end of this review and why only women are allowed in the red tent. Now, this book is from the perspective of Dinah from the Bible, and she is mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 34. So we're not going back to Adam and Eve, but it's further along than that. But this author really brings these characters to life, especially Dinah. Now, Dinah in the Bible is the only daughter to Jacob and Leah. Jacob, of course, has 12 sons and only one daughter, and her name happens to be Dinah. Now, Jacob's parents are Rebecca and Isaac, and they are the grandparents to Dinah. In this book, she does meet her grandparents. Obviously, her, par her parents, Jacob and Leah, are a huge part of this book. And then, as you know from that story, Rebecca comes into the picture also, as many of the other people associated and related to Jacob and Jacob and Leah. Now, this book definitely romanticizes the life of Dinah, and I would say it brings the story to life for sure. And we don't really know if all of these things happened, but it makes for a very interesting story. We only know what happened in the Bible, and it is the life of Dinah is very brief in not she didn't have a short life. She they she was mentioned very briefly. Now in the red tent, Dinah is allowed to go into the red tent when she is young, which this doesn't always happen. But one of the reasons she gets to go into the red tent is because she's the only daughter of Jacob. And so she spends a lot of time with women and her mother, obviously her aunts. And she hears the stories that have been passed down generations to generations. Now in the red tent, Normally, the women go there when it's that time of the month. But the whole book is not focused on that. There are many things that happen in the Red Tent, stories, as I said, passed down generation to generation. Also, many children are born in the Red Tent. So it's a very interesting place to be. And, of course, they're only in the Red Tent for brief periods of time. So we go outside of the tent and we find out what is going on in that community. And they do travel. And I don't want to give too much else away, but the obviously the red tent does move with them. They pick up their animals, they take their relatives, they take the tents and they move at least once, maybe twice. Now, I am about three quarters, almost three quarters of the way done with this book, The Red Tent. I will, so this is part one. I will finish next week and I will give you the conclusion, the entire review of The Red Tent. And I'm excited to find out the end, how things all come together because right where I am right now, it's there are so many things that can happen and i want to find out because this is at a point where dinah is just really she's become a woman and she has someone very interested in her and it it's going to change her life no matter what happens what just happened to her is going to change her life and I'm right on that cusp and I'm gonna find out the story and the ending and everything that happens. And I'm excited 
I really don't want it to end. But anyway, I'm excited to find out what happens. So I'll be back with that in part two of The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. I will see you next week.